All right, guys. Out today doing a little bit of exploring on a creek. <clears throat> this is an original bridge for one of the older roads in this particular area. Uh, I'm going to walk around on the creek if I can. Uh, Alberto has kind of raised the water levels to a point where it's going to be hard to wade, but I'm going to try to stick to the creek bank. Uh, the wind has really been taken out of our cells the last couple weeks uh, because of uh, weather, for one. It has been raining nonstop here in Alabama, but for two, uh, Clayton has been sick for about two weeks now, and Tristan has started a new job where he is in New Mexico and he's doing a little bit of traveling so all of my digging partners are uh, been out they've been out of commission so it's not safe to dig by yourself so I haven't been digging but this is a really neat area and uh, oh the other thing that really took the wind out of my cells is uh, someone's still in my metal detector so I'll catch y'all up on that uh, I've been contacting the pawn shops frequently not necessarily letting them know that I am uh, looking for a stolen metal detector but just in general that I'm looking for one because sometimes people can be shady at the pawn shops in Birmingham so I've just been uh, nonchalantly looking but <clears throat> that being said I've found some good bottle pieces in this creek right here and I'm sorry for all the road noise but the interstate is on the other side of that road but this bridge right here was too cool not to show y'all so I will get back with y'all if I find something. Pick this piece up right here next to the creek and uh, how ironic that it says, please don't litter. <laughs> Anyways, uh, nothing yet, we'll keep going. Nice piece of cobalt. Looks like it had kind of a, a rectangular shape to it. More than likely it was a milk of magnesia. Uh, Might've been a screw top, I'm not sure. The water is just so high, it's, it's making it hard for me to get around right here. So I think I'm going to move to another location. But I wanted to show y'all one more thing about this bridge before I leave. It's pretty neat. Let's get up here where we can see it. Can you imagine this bridge was around driving over that hump right there with a Model T? I bet that would have shook your teeth out. But that's what I wanted to show y'all. That is a major hump. <laughs> That would have been fun. Uh, I thought that there was a date on the bridge, but I, I haven't been able to find it. Here's looking down. I can only imagine what you would find right here in the bottom with the metal detector. So you guessed it, I'll be coming back to see what else we can find. Maybe do a little bit of magnet fishing while we're here, here as well. So moving to the next location. See y'all in a second. All right, guys. We are at location number two. This is the Bessemer Hall of History. This was the original train station of the town right here. And we're gonna go inside. I'm gonna show y'all a couple of the items that they have because they've been a big help to me. I sometimes come in and donate bottles and different things that I've had, signs, whatever I have for people to be able to see. So, this is the main entrance right here. You can see right away that they've got a really nice set up i've got all my gear laying on the table over there that's my stuff from where i was in here a while ago uh they've got an awesome display of bottles back here uh most of these have been donated by different diggers obviously your standout bottles are going to be right there y'all check that thing out that is arguably the rarest bottle coke bottle in the world so if you don't believe me do a little bit of research on it it's an awesome bottle and it's local which is pretty neat uh, on the last video we were talking about finding bottle dumps and you can see they've got a cool little station set up here that you can pull up uh, all of the historic newspapers on microfilm so you can actually print them out for a dollar a piece so they've got a full-blown station to be able to do your own research which is incredibly handy uh, one thing I wanted to show y'all which is pretty neat check this motorcycle out the Nick Celsier American Pickers would have a heart attack over that. Really neat. But this is Bessemer right here. A really nice panographic view or panoramic view of Bessemer. Uh, not sure of the date on it, but it's definitely probably right around the turn of the century. It's beautiful. I would love, love, love to have permission to be able to metal detect all of those different areas. Uh, we're going to step back here gonna take a look at a couple things we're gonna come back we're gonna spend some more time in here in the future but today I just wanted to give you all a brief overview this is really neat right here 
and you say, okay, it's a typewriter, look what it says. This machine came from Adolf Hitler's mountain hideaway. So that is crazy. Adolf Hitler typed on that. That is nuts. Over here, we're going to do a, a quick tour. There's some artifacts over here that were donated, some really neat things over here to the side. Bessemer Liquor Company jugs over here. That's really neat local Bessemer, Bessemer bottles. My dad actually dug one of these right here. Uh, really, really rare. Really rare. We're going to step out back. They've got something hid back here that uh, it has intrigued my interest. I've got to show you all this. All right. This is a cornerstone on older buildings like this one when they would brick up the sides of it of a school or of a uh, just a any big size building they put a cornerstone in and it'd have like this was on the high school here in Bessemer and it would have board of education different people that were there uh, it says this cornerstone stone was laid with mason on it writes on the 18th day of June 1902 all right now you see the top right here where it's hollow that was actually a time capsule so when the building was built, this was sealed in here with a time capsule, and this one's been broke open. This one over here, the time capsule has not been opened. So, your guess is as good as mine as what's in there, but I can tell you this much. I took a Fisher F pulse, and I ran it right over the top of this right here, and there's something the size, about a six inch round circle, probably a 10 piece, that is lighting up. So there's definitely still something in there, and it's killing me to know what it is. But because of it being Masonic, you actually have to get a Freemason to come in and open this up with like a certain ritual that they do. So they've talked about doing that and they have graciously gave me permission to be here when they do that to record it. So we'll be doing that in the future. One more thing over here. You can see all of these grass lots that are to the side. They own these lots and they have gave me permission to metal to take the lots. Now here's the deal. I'm going to find whatever I find I'm going to donate to the museum because they are largely supported by donations. So, y'all keep that in mind. If you're ever in the Bessemer, Alabama area, stop by the Bessemer Hall of History. It is well worth your time. It's a good group of guys here. Chris is the curator here. Super nice guy. He'll be able to be more than willing to answer any questions you have. They also own this really cool building across the street over here. See if y'all can see that. The Jay Colley building. It was wholesale wines, whiskey, and beers. So the, the mural's actually been repainted. It was actually on the other side of the building at one point, but they're in the middle of trying to restore it right now. So they're actually just they're doing a great service for, for Bessemer and preserving the history here. There again, if you're ever in the area, be sure to stop by.